All right, folks, in this video, I'm gonna answer the question, how do you export your chart of accounts from QuickBooks Online into Excel or your item list, your products and services list from QuickBooks Online into Excel? Now, why would you do that? Well, possibly because you wanna import it in a brand new file and you wanna have that chart of accounts and that products and services list ready to go so you don't have to enter them from scratch. That could be a use case, but there's multiple ones. So let's start by doing the chart of accounts. First thing I'm gonna do is on the left side, I'm gonna click on where it says accounting and then click on chart of accounts. That will take me into the chart of accounts. You will notice up here on the right, I have a little button that says run report. I'm gonna click on run report and that will create essentially a report of uh, the chart of accounts. At this point, I will just export what I'm looking at on the screen here. So I click on the export button and click on export to Excel. And it's just gonna save it in my downloads folder. There it is, it downloaded into my downloads folder. So I'll go back and check that out. Let me now export my products and services list. So I'm gonna go into sales, the sales tab, and then click on products and services. And then here where it says more, right next to the new button, I'm gonna click on run report. Same exact principle. This is gonna basically create a report of all my products and services. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my export button and then click on export to Excel. Now I'm gonna open them so you see what they look like. Let me start with my chart of accounts. It's just gonna be a regular Excel file with the chart of accounts data. Uh, before I import it into another file, I wanna just open it in Excel, check it out first and clean it up so it's import ready. So I'm gonna maximize that right there. I'm gonna click here, it says enable editing and I'm just gonna kill the first couple of uh, rows before we get to the actual header. So I'll click delete that, I don't need that. I'm also gonna delete this first column. I don't need that either. So there we go, so we have only the data that we need. Then I'm gonna scroll down here and make sure the bottom there isn't anything weird. Like for example, we got this merged uh, a row here. I'm just gonna delete a couple of rows right under the last piece of data right click and delete, and there we go. So that's an actual importable file. I'll go ahead and save that. Let me up close it and open up my products and services list. Let me just make sure we don't have the exact same situation. And uh, yes, we do. So let me click on enable editing, delete the first couple of rows. That's garbage, delete, delete the first column, delete, scroll down, scroll down all the way down and delete all the blank ones, a couple blank ones at the bottom. And then from here at this point, I would choose if I want to modify any of the descriptions, any of the item names, maybe some of the prices and the cost. I could choose at this point if I want to modify any of the stuff before importing it. Let me go ahead and save that. And I opened up a different QuickBooks Online file that actually has no information in it. And I'll show you, I'm gonna go into sales and uh, products and services, and we're gonna see what's in there now. So right now this is just a blank screen. Um, so I'm just gonna import it by clicking on the gear menu and then go to where it says import data. I'll click on import data and then I'm gonna select uh, products and services, which is what I wanna import. Select products and services. And then I'm gonna click on browse. And then go to my file where my products and services is, click on open and then click on next. Now it's gonna ask me to map what we have. Now that spreadsheet wasn't as complete as maybe we wanted. I'll discuss that in a second. Uh, whatever is in that spreadsheet, I'm gonna go ahead and open it again uh, so we can see the actual um, columns that were here. We have product name, type, description, price, and cost. So that's really the only things, that's really the only thing we can map. So we got product name, we have type, description, price, and cost. If I wanted to export uh, income account, purchase account, expense account, I would have to have configured that uh, report prior to the export to contain that information. And I'll explain that in a second. I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. And you're gonna see all the products and services are gonna come, up, come in in this sort of pre-import sheet. Now in this pre-import sheet, I have to assign an income account. QuickBooks by default will assign it to a random income account or the default income account. Uh, expense account, again, QuickBooks by default 
will assign it to a random expense account uh, because that wasn't in the in the list. I'm gonna go ahead and click on X. I'm not gonna finish importing it. I'm actually gonna do the chart of accounts first, just because it's just kind of important to uh, to make sure that the chart of accounts comes in before you import a products and services list, especially if the products and services list contains income accounts and expense accounts. So let's do the chart of accounts import. I'm in the same screen here under the gear menu and import data. And I'm gonna click on where it says chart of accounts. Then I'm gonna click on browse, select the chart of accounts that I downloaded in Excel, click on open, and then click on next. Same thing, it'll ask me to do the mapping. Uh, that one didn't have account numbers, so I can skip account numbers. Let's just open up that Excel file real quick, just so, so we remember what we were looking at. And we have account name, type, detail type, description, and balance. Those were the data points in the spreadsheet. In here, the only thing we can bring is uh, detail type, name, number, and type. So the account balances cannot be brought in anyway. So it doesn't matter if that's on the spreadsheet in the first place. I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. You will go into the sort of pre setup screen, just kind of letting you know, hey, this is how the data is going to import. I'll go ahead and click on import. Okay, if there's any conflicts of the accounts, accounts that already exist, because maybe I didn't delete them or their default accounts, it's just gonna tell you, hey, by the way, all these accounts already exist. You can't import them. That's fine with me. We can just uncheck them and then click on import, and then we are done. I'm gonna go back into my chart of accounts. I'll click on the gear menu this time, and click on chart of accounts, and we'll see that uh, my chart of accounts from my spreadsheet should be there intact. Now remember, if you're gonna import a chart of accounts, and there's already an existing chart of accounts, you're gonna have to allow, start merging accounts, or organizing them, making them sub-accounts of each other, because you can't just import a brand new chart of accounts on an existing file that has data and except expect it to magically fix itself. So we have redundant accounts, like for example, let's say that this um, equipment and rental income account is sort of the account where we wanna catch all the other income accounts. I'm actually gonna have to go into any of these generic accounts that are here, like this one called sales and edit it, go to edit, and we'll make it a sub account of our existing uh, structure here, the new structure that we created where we have an income account here called uh, income, and I wanna make that sales account a sub-account of income. I just select that, and essentially I'm just moving the old existing account into my new chart of account system. Click on save and close, and now I've made my old account a sub-account of my new structure of my chart of accounts. If I wanted to merge it with something else because it's a redundant account, then instead of just making it a sub-account, I just rename it and make it the same thing. So again, we're gonna make this equipment rental income the one we're gonna rename it to. So we're gonna to our old account called sales, click on edit, and then I'll change this to equipment rental income. As long as it's the exact same account name, and I click on save and close, QuickBooks will say, hey, wait a second, this already exists. Would you like to merge the two? And warning, this is not undoable. Once you do this, it's a permanent thing. And again, we're only doing this if we're importing a chart of accounts in an existing chart of accounts with existing data, and we wanna adapt the old data to the new chart of accounts, I guess. So we'll click on yes, and that will merge the two accounts, and you have to go through the exercise to make sure that there's no redundant data in there. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and log out and log back into my other company, the one that had that, uh, that uh, item list, and I'm gonna show you kind of an extended version of this, where I'm gonna add the income account and purchases accounts into that export. So when I import that products and services list, it uh, applies to my new chart of accounts, which is based from the same company file. So I'm gonna go into sales and products and services. And we're gonna go into more and then run report just as we did before. Uh, but now what I'll do is I'm gonna click on customize. I'm gonna customize the report and then I'm gonna click on change columns, and I'm gonna add new columns here. I'm gonna add the income account, the purchase account, and the expense account, because those things can be imported as well. And if you wanna import any of the other data points and there are importable, you can export them at this point. But for now, I'm just gonna export those 
click on run report. I'm going to export this products and services list again so it contains those accounts. So I'm going to go to the right here, my export button, export to Excel. If you remember correctly, we opened the Excel file and uh, cleaned it up to make sure it doesn't have those extra uh, pieces of information that are not importable. So enable editing, delete the first couple of rows, because that's all garbage, we don't need that. Delete the first column, we don't need that. Scroll down, and we said we wanted to get rid of maybe the last four or five blank lines. Delete that, because that contains some weird merged uh, lines in there. And now I'm gonna click on Save, and then uh, I'm gonna go back in my QuickBooks, I'm going to switch to my other account, the one that I'm importing into. And now I'm going to go to my products and services and import the new uh, long list of products and services that's going to match the new chart of accounts. So I'm going to click on products and services. Okay, it's still just a blank screen, so I'll click on import a file, which is the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to hit escape for a second. Same thing of clicking on the gear menu and clicking on import data and then clicking on products and services. Uh, whoops, not invoices, products and services, and that will get me to the same screen. So now I'm gonna click on Browse. I'm gonna go into my Downloads folder, select the last Excel file I just uh, edited, click on Open, and then I should click on Next. Now I'm gonna get to do some extended mapping. Notice I can now match the income account, the purchase account, the cost account, and I have basically more information I can import at this point. Now, I'm not going to discuss importing inventory items with beginning balances. That would be a subject for an entire different video because that's more complex and nuanced. These are just services for the most part. I'm going to click on Next, and I will continue and finish doing uh, the import. However, this time around, you will notice that the income accounts attached to it are the actual income accounts from uh, your chart of accounts that matches uh, what you have set up or what you had exported from the other file in the first place. So remember, we actually had these generic income accounts and purchase accounts be automatically selected because we didn't map them on the first place. Now that we did a more extended export and we have the same chart of accounts as the other file, we can now import an item list with the chart of accounts that matches those items. Then I click on import. So let's do a quick note here. If you get an error because the structure of your item list is with sub items, and I'm gonna open up uh, the list so we can see here. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see a little bit better. So sub items means you're gonna have a category and then an item and an item next to it. And usually it's split up with a little column in the middle. Anytime you have that structure where you have a category and then a subcategory or an item and a sub item or a category and an item, whichever way you wanna see it, you actually have to manually create the categories first and then import those items. That's why we got an error on this one. If you don't have that structure, you're not gonna to have to worry about that. So I'm gonna show you briefly how you would fix something like that. So I'm gonna go back into my products and services list. I'm actually gonna get rid of what I have now. I'm gonna select the whole thing here go to batch actions and make inactive. I just want to get rid of the stuff that did import uh, just because I don't want to have any issues there and, uh, and we'll go back into a blank products and services list or hours and sales, which is the default ones that I can't get rid of in the first place. So unfortunately there isn't a way to import the just the categories. So we would have to isolate uh, the ones that are just the parent categories like project in this case and plans and permits and create those categories first before we import the item. So I'll show you, I'm going to copy the first category here, go back into QuickBooks, click on more and then click on manage categories. And then I'm going to click on new category again. Unfortunately, there isn't a way to import them. So it's got to be a manual process. So we'll import just that category, click on save. And now my category is set up. Let me go back into my spreadsheet and do, do it for the second category here. Copy that, and then come in here and go to new category, paste that one, and click on save, and then go to the next one on my spreadsheet, which will be this one called site work. 
copy that, go back into QuickBooks, new category, paste, save, and again, unfortunately, uh, for the quickness of this video, I'm not going to do all 30 categories that are there, but I'll just do three to show you. I'm going to go back here, and then now my item list is going to show all my products. There are no categories there or products under those categories yet. So the categories are created. Again, I'm going to go to more, manage categories. The categories are there. Now I'm going to do the import again and see if I don't get an error, at least for those three categories. So I'm going to go here where it says import data. Select my products and services. Right here on the right. Do the same thing. Click on browse. Select my Excel file. Click on open. Click on next. Next. You will see that I do have some errors for the ones I didn't create categories for. So I'm going to click on import. And I'm going to close it. And yes. And we're going to go back into our sales, products and services. And we're going to notice that under my category project, my item labor was created, materials, etc. Let me open up the spreadsheet again so you see it. So we got here labor, materials, all those items. I'm going to come back into QuickBooks. They are there, but they're under the project category. All right, and if I scroll down, I got my plans and permits category. And then I have down here my site work category. And that's uh, pretty much kind of what it ends, right? So if I had created all those categories prior manually, then I can import my item list that has that structure. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, check out the description for any additional links or information, and comment below if you thought this was complete or it was helpful, or if you needed something, if it needed something extra. Anyway, thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.